I think that couples must pass a test before they can be allowed to have children. According to the World Health Organization, 40 million children below the age of 15 are subjected to child abuse every year. 80 to 98 percent of them suffer physical punishment in their homes. Other forms of punishment include insults, name-calling, isolation, rejection, threats, and emotional indifference. In the United States alone, approximately five children die every day because of child abuse. Child abuse in any form is a big problem because it affects the child for the long term. It leads to mental health problems, deviance, and it forces the child to either commit a suicide or become a criminal. The level of crimes in the community increases due to the complete absence of emotional stability in the child's life. So what if everyone had to pass a test before they can be allowed to have children? The test would consist of four categories that each couple must pass to be granted a certificate to have a child. Genetic compatibility, financial stability, intelligence, and mental health. In the first step, the couple would go through genetic testing. No matter how much you love each other and care for one another, you are very likely not to be compatible on the genetic level. This means that the child that you will have with someone else might not be a healthy one due to the inherited genetic diseases. Your genome and the genome of the other person are not compatible enough to give rise to healthy generation. And guess what? There are more than 6,000 non-genetic disorders and they occur one out of every 200 births. Majority of these genetic diseases are incurable. Luckily, genetic testing allows us to determine the health of the child before birth simply by testing the couple's genome. The question is, why would anyone want to do that? As a child, it is certainly better to live a good healthy life like everyone else. As parents, you won't have to drain your income trying to find a cure for your unhealthy child. And assuming that the treatment exists, but you can't afford it, then you are going to feel guilty for life and you will blame yourself for your child's health and it's going to affect your mental health for a very long term. The second part of the test evaluates the financial stability of the couple. Can they really provide good health care, education and quality life for their child? And if they want to have more than one child, is their income good enough to support their children until they are independent? Couples who can't afford to provide good health care and education for their children often face hardships. The father might go for criminal ways to make money. The mother would go to look for a second job or sell sex to ensure her child is provided with good health care and education. This leads to stress in their lives, and this stress leads to domestic violence and relationship problems, which again affects the child indirectly. It can even get worse. The child would be forced to go on the streets to work and support the family instead. Being in the streets, the child would be exploited, becomes a drug addict, forgets about education, or maybe even gets trafficked and abused sexually or suffers organ theft. 
all because the parents couldn't afford to provide a quality life for their own child. So, it's necessary for the couples to pass the financial stability test. The next part of the test examines the level of intelligence of the couple. And I'm not saying couples must be as smart as Albert Einstein or Marie Curie. We know reaching that level of intelligence is very demanding, but they should be aware not to make any decisions on their child's life without educating themselves on that subject matter. For example, if it concerns the health of their child, then they shouldn't decide on that until they have acquired all the knowledge on that case. It is their responsibility to make themselves fully aware and well informed on everything that concerns their child's future. And they should take that responsibility very seriously. A mother shot and killed one of her adult daughters who was found in the middle of Remsen Hollow Lane. She wanted to hurt her husband in the worst way possible, which is why she killed their daughters but left him alive to grieve. The last part of the test is the most important one. It examines the mental health of the couple and their relationship with one another. Many parents take pleasure in watching their children suffer. It makes them feel good about themselves. So they spend most of their lives tormenting their children for their own personal gain. It is so cruel and inhuman. Couples should also be evaluated for how much they truly love each other before they can have a child. It is necessary for the child to be born in a house that is free of domestic violence. This part of the test should be stressed out because often mentally unstable parents who have problems with each other take revenge from each other by harming their own children. So why would any child pay the price for the parents' mistakes? Once any couple passes all the categories of this test, they can be certified to have a child of their own. This will help all the children who will be born in the future to have a quality life that is free of suffering and torture. As much as you have the right to have a child, every child has the right to have a quality life.